Hey, it's Alejandro Duarte from Valin, and in this video, I'm going to answer Luis Villarreal, who is asking, or rather suggesting a topic on integration with Spring Boot. Uh, so I thought it would be a good idea to uh, explain uh, some key concepts on um, dependency injection and um, inversion of control and how you can use those to create better code. So let's jump right into it. So I'm going to create a new project. If you are following this and you want to try by yourself, make sure that you are selecting this option. And let's use Comdor example and demo for the project name. Here you find all the instructions on how to import the, the project in any uh, of the popular ideas. I'm using IntelliJ IDEA. And let me enter the presentation mode. We can ignore this warning. And I'm also going to remove any code I don't need. Even this test. That's it. All right. So at this point, we have only this class. Which is uh, which or which defines the entry point of the Spring Boot application. So as you can see, there is a public static void main method. That means you can run this application uh, like any other Java application, All right? Um, but let's create something. So first, I'd like to create a service class, H service, and it's going to have just one method that returns an integer get um, get age by birth date and it receives a local date and implementing this in Java is pretty simple because we have the period dot between method that date and uh, the current date right so we have the period we need to get the years. That's it. So pretty simple class, right? Let's use it in a button view. Main view. We need to mark this with route. We need to extend some existing web, com um, sorry, uh, UI component. For example, vertical layout or composite, which is what I like to, to do. Of vertical layout so we hide the fact that we are using a vertical layout and inside the constructor we can create all the um, the components that we need so first I need a date picker with birth date and I need a button as well calculate age All right, now we can add those to the vertical layout, but we first need to get the vertical layout with get content. And the date picker and the button, that's it. So all the layout with uh, its components is ready. Now we can add behavior. For this app, it's just a simple click listener, calculate age and we pass the value in the date picker. So now inside this method, we can use the service, the H service class. So in a real life application, you probably need the instance in several methods of this. So it kind of makes sense to create a private final H service, right? And Let's pretend we are not using Spring right now uh, or any framework uh, except Vadin. So you could create the instance by just using the uh, new operator keyword, right? So uh, that's one way of doing it. So now we can use it here. It's not new anymore, obviously. So we can calculate the age and let's create also a string 
we can use string concatenation even better string dot format h some string years old and we need to pass the value now let's add that to the uh, vertical layout in a new uh, paragraph that's what I'm going to use here so that we get new lines of text on the browser and so that's it so I'm going to run this Java application remember it was just a normal or a standard Java application with a with a uh, main method the entry point and the first time you run the application is gonna take a little bit more of time but subsequent runs are going to be much faster right now it's downloading all the dependencies uh, uh, server-side and client-side dependencies um, but uh, like I said uh, it's only the first time then it's gonna be much faster eventually we'll get a, 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 a log entry here saying that the application is started and then we can go to the browser yeah there we go it started so let's go to localhost 8080 and see if this works for example around uh, one year ago one year old let's select another random date six years old All right so it seems to be working also pretty young people apparently anyway um, so the app works now what is wrong with this app uh, nothing really uh, it's alright it, it works and, uh, and, and, and it's not bad it's just that it can be improved the code can be improved especially since we are using spring so let's let's think about it um, who is creating instances of the main view class it's not us which by the way IntelliJ idea is marking this class as never used and it's true we are not using the class anywhere uh, this one we are using so it's not marked as not used but this one is uh, who is creating the instances of this class? Well, Vadin is. Vadin is detecting this class and creating a new instance and um, configuring the web application. But actually, Vadin delegates the uh, creation task to the Spring framework. And uh, when, a, when, when instances of a class are created by Spring, they are called beans or spring managed beans so spring is managing those instances and uh, it allows you to do uh, certain things like in a declarative way or uh, or inject dependencies of the class but kind of uh, automatically so you don't have to do it so uh, what's what's um, What's the problem with, with, with not having, with, with us creating the, uh, the instance? Uh, uh, this code as is has uh, one problem if you want to, for example, unit test this method. So you want to create a unit test to, uh, or targeting this, these lines of code, you're going to test that class also indirectly, right? And that's something you don't want to do. You want to only uh, test this code. And so one way of doing it is just uh, creating a setter, in which case you will have to remove the final keyword. And then uh, in the unit test, you can create a mock and uh, use the setter to use that instead of, uh, of, of this one, right? That's fine, but there are more elegant solutions. And that's what we are going to see. So again, this is created by Vadin uh, through Spring, right? So it's not us calling this this constructor it's somebody else it's the framework so we are giving control to the framework on our, on our application so it calls us instead so that's the reason it's called uh, inversion of control we don't have the control it's the framework having the control now and that concept concept is uh, related 
to another one. Since we are giving control to a framework, it can do stuff such as injecting dependencies, like I mentioned. So how can we get rid of this? We don't want to be the ones creating this. Well, first of all, uh, we would need to make sure that all the dependencies are managed by, by Spring. How can we do that? So it's as simple as marking this with component or with service, which is more specific. This has no state. Uh, so this is a service class. No state, makes sense to mark it with this. Now Spring is going to detect this class and kind of promise to create instances when they are needed. All right. And so then again, later when Spring is creating this one, it will see like, okay, you need apparently an instance, right? How does it know? Well, if we add a parameter to the constructor like this, Spring knows you know you need this one, right? So you no not longer need to create your uh, or to instantiate the instance is going to be Spring, and that's what's called dependency injection. So Spring is uh, injecting the dependency. All right. So it's as simple as that. Now, what happens uh, if we want to create a unit test for this? So the unit test can just pass a mock, which I will cover in a future video on testing. Uh, so those are the main concepts, and that's that's how it works. That that's the reason it's this is not null, and uh, and uh, and hopefully you understand now who is creating what. Um, so the bottom line, dependency injection means. Uh, some mechanism to inject the dependencies and it's uh, it could be your code it could be your own framework or or a factory or whatever but uh, it, it's not inside this class it's somewhere else in our case uh, spring framework is, is doing this job for us and uh, inversion of control means you give control to the framework to some kind of framework and the framework calls your uh, your um, your code. You can even see it here. So we are telling, we are giving Spring the control by calling this method. So we are not do, we aren't doing anything else. Just hey, take control of my app. Do whatever you have to do. And that's uh, when all these things happen. So yeah, you have a service. I'll create instances of that when needed. Ah, oh, here I see you need that one. Like I promised, I'm going to inject uh, a new instance of that. And now this is not null, and you can create um, or you can call the services. So uh, uh, an advantage of using Spring in this case is that you, you get a lot of services around it, kind of declaratively. For example, if you wanted to expose this as a REST web service for some reason for external systems, uh, you can just call uh, or annotate these uh, with REST controller. Or if you want to call this in, a, in an asynchronous way, then you can do something like this. Uh, there are security annotations. There are, there are several other services that you can use around your classes. Uh, so that's, that's very useful and powerful, um, not to mention uh, the concepts of dependency injection and uh, an inversion of controller. I hope you have understood with um, this explanation. So yeah, that's pretty much about it. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, learned something. And if you uh, have any other ideas on topics or questions you would like me to cover in these videos, let me know in the comment section. And I'll see you in the next video.